And now y'all sounding like life spring this morning. Got a little life back in you. Before we get started, um, I, I want to start off with a little, telling something. and and Because um, we're on this four-part series, Getting Past Your Past. How many in here has a past? I want every hand in here rose. Hey, we had a past. It don't matter. Good, bad, or ugly, we all got a past. Amen? And... Sometimes our past will, will block us from the blessings that God has for us. And I know in my own personal life, I, I've had to overcome some, some past hurts in order to, to, to let God speak life into me. And every time he does, it, it, it's never comfortable. So if you get a little uncomfortable today, you're in the right place at the right time. You're in the right place at the right time. Because when the Spirit of God is speaking to you, I promise you, it's out of your comfort zone. Well, I'm a, I'm a little OCD, just to be honest with you. I, I'm very particular about keeping my house, for the most part, clean. Amen? Lived in, but clean. I, I love it when a 10-year-old will come to your house and go, Momo. This house smells like a new house. I'm like, yeah. No, it's 18 years old, baby. But uh, anyway. But how many, how many have ever walked in your house and you go, whoo, Lord, where did that come from? I mean, if it smelled like something came up from the, whew, from the dead, man. I mean, that, that stench, that smell just overtakes you. Come on, we'll smell it for anybody else. Maybe left something in the garbage can. And if you got little ones, they may have left you a present somewhere. Whatever it may be. Maybe something in the refrigerator, some leftovers that's been there a little too long that's rotting. Well, if you're like me, I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna bloodhound that smell out, and I'm going to go find that smell. And then we're going to take appropriate actions. No matter if I have to get on the gas mask and everything else, we're going to deal with that smell. Amen? How many, it don't matter how much you mop, how much you clean, whatever, how good you take care of your house or you don't, eventually you're going to run into that time in your life that, boy, something just, whew, Lord, hmm. And what do we have to do? We immediately have to offend it. I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes in our spiritual life, we do the same thing. I mean, we'll be rocking along there. We think we got it all going on, and, man, we've handled this. We dealt with that. We dealt with this, and we dealt with that. And then all of a sudden, something will pop up, and it'll stink so bad that everybody in the neighborhood sees it and smells it. Amen? And we have to ask God, God, help me with that. <coughs> I need some spiritual ratic ratification right here, right now, Lord. I need you to help and intervene in this because... I don't know, you know, sometimes getting over ourself is probably one of the hardest things that we do. And, and why God gave us free will, I don't know. I, I know Mark. I would not have gave Mark free will. But he does. Now, our job is to say, okay, God, help me. So we're today on part two of overcoming our past, uh, and it is on forgiving those who have hurt you. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is vital to our spiritual growth. And we're going we're gonna to go into the Bible today, and we're going to dig in, and we're going we're gonna, to uh, unpack this in a, in a way maybe you can receive this. If you'll open your heart today, I'm going to ask the question, how many of you here has ever been hurt by someone? Amen. Look at the hands. Maybe you've been misunderstood. There was a misunderstanding uh, or betrayal or, or, or something. Maybe there's some, some past hurts so bad that um, you carry a, a, a wound in the front of your heart. And, you, and you'll know that it is. is it, it just takes the right person to say the right thing at the right time. That person, and all of a sudden, it'll just... <laughs> Blow up on you. Why do I act like that? Why do I do that? Come on, we all have, am I the only one in here? And then some 
We've gotten so spiritual. We've got our house clean. But be honest with you, down deep, there's a smell that we need to get to. And that's because we've taken that hurt and we've shoved it so far down in the bottom of our heart that God can't penetrate it. So I hope if you're here today that you're allowing God to, to dig down deep and unroot some things in our life. My prayer all week this week has been, God, use this message to transform some lives. To transform lives and set the captive free. Before we leave here today, I, I want to be set free. You ought to say that with me today. Before I leave here today, I want to be set free. I'm tired of the prison of my own mind. I'm tired of the prisons that the enemy puts on us. Mark, in the Gospel of Mark 11, verse 25, Jesus penned these words. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him. So that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. And here's the word as a pastor now. For as many years as I've pastored, I always seem to hear these words. But pastor, you don't understand what they did to me. You don't understand how deep this is. They, they gossiped about me. They misused me. They, they, they abused me. I, I, I was abused at the hand of, uh, of someone. Or, and, and let me tell you, I'm not making light of that because I know there is some horrendous things that go on in life that that cause us to do and, and feel the way we feel but he didn't give us a suggestion here he, he gave us a command forgive those that you have ought against so that your father in heaven may forgive you of your sins and I'm going to be honest with you, that, that one kind of weighed on me heavy. And still today, that's one that I have to go back every once in a while. I smell a little, little, little smell in my own life, and I have to go and I have to dig for that smell. And usually it'll come back to this right here is unforgiveness. That we'll, we'll put it in and don't even realize we deposited it and holding it. Y'all with me? Maybe somebody here, you, you've been abandoned in life and... Mom and dad's not been there and not been the parents that they should have been. I, I, I have a saying for that with my kids. You don't like the way I raised you? You got yours now? Show me how to do it. Be a better parent than I was. That's what we should all be praying for, that our kids will be a better parent than we were. Amen? I, I, I want to tell them, be a little personal today. Because this is one of the areas that God really dealt with me about early on in my walk. As a child growing up, I was abandoned. As a child, I ended up in the system and, and ended up uh, in and out of foster care. And, and I had this, this hurt, not necessarily by my dad. It was more I carried it on my mom. There was nine that we know of total. And why you keep having kids if you ain't going to take care of them? Y'all need to hear me today. And this thought of being, you got brought here, but you didn't mean enough for somebody to take care of you. And in that, 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 that really set a, an abandonment issue in my life that I still deal with today. Because to be honest with you, I, I, I hate it when people walk out of my life. Y'all with me today? Sometimes you got to let them go, but I hate that. And, and I've learned that sometimes you just got to figure out why somebody thinks and does what they do and what caused that to happen. And for years, for decades, I held a, I held a bitterness toward my mom that, uh, I, I mean, I, I, wouldn't even let, I wouldn't even take my kids to see her. She didn't even see her grandkids. And I was really really battling inside it caused me a lot of anguish toward women especially if i saw somebody that i didn't think they were raising their kids like they should or giving their kids the attention they should you brought them in this world they belong to you and it's your responsibility to take care of them y'all with me 
I know, I'm going to get some emails over this one, but it's okay. I, I pray this will settle in today because it hurts. I mean, it hurts to even talk about it even today, that the fact that, you know, you, you, life scars you. And them scars are hard to come by. They're, they're, they're hard to fix. They're hard to repair. Maybe you're sitting here today and, and, and maybe a, a, a significant one walked out of your life. And you're still hurting and still holding that grudge. Still holding that hurt. I, I remember I got saved and, and I had listened in, to my pastor talk about forgiveness. And, well, God was dealing with me hard about it. You know, you haven't even picked the phone up and called your mom in almost 10 years. But God, she knows my number. She didn't care then and she don't care now. Can I get one amen in here? Because at the end of the day, that's how the enemy will set and they'll f flood your mind and all of these things. And, and finally, the Holy Spirit had to show me, you know what? It wasn't your mother's uh, uh, intention to abandon you. She raised all the other kids. She couldn't raise you because you were hell. She couldn't do what? No, I mean, she took me to school one day, dropped me off. I was sitting in the living room when she got back. Y'all help me. I like staying with her because then I could do exactly what I wanted to do, when I wanted to do it, because nobody's going to tell me what to do. So God just started working on my heart. And I said, you know what, God? I I'm going to trust you because I'm all in. I'm not just half in. I'm not just trying to just get enough to get my, my pie in the sky when I die. I want all your blessings down here on the ground while I'm around. So I want everything that you have. And you just told me in your word that in order for me to receive what I need to receive from you, that I need to first make that first step. And even though I didn't feel it, I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't feel it when I called my mom. And I called her and said, hey, how you doing? fine she didn't know what was coming next i said well i just want to let you know i started going to church and and received god a, a jesus my lord and savior and she said well that's good i said yeah and i said in that i, I found out something she said, what's that i said i i, I gotta forgive you for what see most people don't even know why you're even offended at them and I told her how I felt from my heart for the first time. And she started crying. She said, I didn't realize that. I said, that's how I felt. Now I, I got to ask you to do me a favor. She said, sure, what's that? I said, please forgive me for being, not being the son I should have been. Forgive me now. I mean, boy, God just started speaking through me. I, and I'm, I mean, I'm not, at first I wasn't feeling it when I grabbed that telephone. Can I tell you something? Some people, well, I don't know how you expect me to forgive them. You don't know what they've done. They molested me. They did this. They did that. Can I tell you something? Even when you don't feel like it, the Bible says pray for your enemies. And everybody said, hallelujah. On your paper there, you should have a, a place to write down who, who, who has hurt you? I want you to take a minute and write their name down because we're going, we're going to release some things today. Maybe somebody stepped outside of the marriage or maybe there's some people that um, had a bad business deal that went south and you're still holding that grudge. Maybe it was a third grade teacher that spanked you. Come on, I, I had a lot of them. Just saying. When they got new paddles in, they always called me to the office to try them out. <laughs> Y'all laughing, but kind of true. Now I'll ask you a question. Why should I forgive? Why should I forgive? We're going to go to the Bible with that. The Bible says, because unforgiveness hurts me. 
Y'all with me? Write that down. Because unforgiveness hurts me. The writer of Hebrews says this, See to it that no one misses the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Sometimes we allow roots to grow in our heart and then we have to deal with the fruit of it. And usually that comes in anger, mistrust, one bad relationship after another. Can't be committed. Come on. Paul says that love keeps no records of wrongs, but bitterness keeps detailed records. Amen? It's like this here. Just imagine breaking a glass, and and you reach down, and you just get that handful of glass, and you squeeze it. It hurts. So unforgiveness hurts because I'm going to be honest with you. All it takes is the, the, the right thing and the right circumstances to come along. And it causes us to make bad decisions because we're carrying that. And if we're carrying it, we have the ability through the power of God to release that. Amen? Anne Lamont says this, unforgiveness is like drinking rat poison and hoping the other person will die. Unforgiveness is like drinking rat poison and hoping the other person will die. So why do I need to forgive? Because I'll need forgiveness again. That's a big one. Because I'll need forgiveness. Matter of fact, I'll probably need forgiveness before I go to bed tonight. Anybody with me tonight? I may need forgiveness before I leave here today. Right? So, I, I, in order for me to want forgiveness, i got to first give forgiveness. Amen? <laughs> Matthew, the sixth chapter, says this. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men of their sins, now this is in the Bible, so don't shoot the messenger, okay? If you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. In other words, we, we're expecting God to do something that we won't, we're not willing to do ourselves. And we serve a loving God. Amen? A story in the Bible that Jesus goes right on in the 6th chapter of Matthew, and he starts talking to the, 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 the guy that owed the, uh, owed the one guy, I think it's 10,000, is that right? Talents. Which, when we read that, we don't think much of it, but actually that's about 20 years as a, 20 years of wages in those days. Today, it would probably been about $2 billion that they owed him. Knew he'd never be able to pay it back. He asked for forgiveness, and he received the forgiveness. The guy forgave, gave his debt, then turned right around, and when it owed him a little, he went and he persecuted him. Matthew, the 18th chapter, says, Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of us of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. You want mercy from God? Give mercy. Come on. Well, I just can't forgive them. I just don't know how to forgive them. Let me tell you what I've learned in, in, in learning to forgive, and I have gotten so much better of, about being able to just forgive even when I don't feel like it. Maybe if somebody's done you so wrong that, you know, there's no possible way out of your own mouth that you feel like you can wholeheartedly Forgive somebody. Can I tell you, it first starts with praying for them. Yes. Praying for them. Be honest with you. You might not feel it. You may not even want to do it. But watch this. Right action will always 
lead to the right consequences. So if we, if we have the right action of going through the motion, even when we don't feel like it, watch, I've always noticed something. My prayers never change them. They always change me. Yeah. And, when we, and when we do that, our heart changes. Matter of fact, there's some of you sitting in here today, you've got grudges and you've got, uh, you've got stuff against people that, that, that the hurts and past, that they're just going on with their life like nothing's ever happened. You know why? Because they don't even know that they're hurt, you're hurt with them. Or they feel like they can't do nothing about it. Well, God's got you here today to do something about it. Amen? One thing in the AA program, that's one of the first steps that they teach you is that you have to go reconcile all your differences and, and tell those that, that you've hurt in the process of your, of your they call it a disease, of your addiction, those, those that you've hurt, now you've got to go make your wrongs right. There's some of us in here, don't miss next week. You, you, you just can't miss next week. It goes right along with this week. But Watch. Learning how to pray for them is important. Well, how do I pray for them? I don't even, I don't know how I would pray for them. Lord, bless them and call their name. Lord, bless them, call their name. And there's something about when you do that, it releases you spiritually of the bondage of unforgiveness that is in your heart. You'll immediately, within weeks, you'll start feeling that release of, of that. And all of a sudden, you'll, just, you'll find yourself just praying on and on for them. Amen? Hallelujah. How do I forgive someone who hurt me? Again, pray for those who hurt you. And I don't mean pray that they get herpes or or hemorrhoids, or something like that. Some of y'all looking at me kind of funny, like that's, that's kind of what, what you was thinking of. See, back in, 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 in Jesus' time, the Roman law was an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. You cut my arm off, I cut your arm off, blood for blood. That's what was taught. You do unto me. Matter of fact, we don't got it down so pat now. You do, don't wait till they do it unto you. Do it unto them first, and that way you already won up on them. Amen? Come on, some of y'all understand. See, the Romans worship the idol of revenge. And God says, I am your vindicator. I am your vindicator. I am your vindicator. I am am your vindicator but you don't understand pastor what they've done to me what did they do to our savior on this on the cross in the midst of all the suffering and all the all the things that he went through he said father forgive them for they know not what they do he's in, he's already he's forgiven and being an example to us how to forgive even when he was in the in the most pain that he would ever know in his life y'all with me today Matthew, the fifth chapter, verse 43, says this. You have heard that it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But Jesus says this. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. In other words, action before attitude. Action before attitude. Action, look, we, 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 mm. We love to take our enemies and put them in our pocket and carry them around. And when we need to, we pull them out and slap them around a little bit, especially when we get around somebody else that don't like them. Or we'll convince somebody else not to like them because we don't like them. And the church said, well, I'm going to wait for that feeling. When I get the feeling, I'll pray for them. If you wait on that feeling, you'll never get the feeling to pray for them. Everybody said, if you'll take action, the feeling will follow. If you'll take action, the feeling will always follow. When God told me I had to call my mom, I, I didn't feel like it. But when I took the action, the feeling followed. We resolved a whole lot of uh, decades of hurt and misunderstandings. Two, 
Forgive as you've been forgiven. How many in here, if you would have enough paper in front of you to write down all the things that God's forgiven you of? Matter of fact, Peter will ask, as Jesus said, how many times should I forgive them? Because Peter is kind of like me. Uh, there's got to be a limit on this somewhere. Y'all, come on. There's got to be a limit somewhere here, God. I mean, how many times? I, and, and Jesus said, S- not seven, Peter. Seven times 70. A day? Come on, I, I can already hear him. A day? Are you kidding me? He says, that's... By the hour, if that's what it takes. Forgive if, as you have been forgiven. I don't know about you. I got a lot I'm thankful for that God has forgiven me of. And, and, and you know what? Not just in my past, even in my present, but also in my future. That His grace is sufficient. Amen? Colossians, Paul says this, uh, 3.13 Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Mm. Mm. Forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. Forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. That's one that echoed in my heart for a while. Forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. Because I'm going to be honest with you, it's not hard to, to take up a dispute with someone. Matter of fact, take up some dispute. Listen, I, I, I'm easy to forgive, but what I sometimes struggle with is when you hurt somebody in my family. Then I find it a little harder to forgive than I did when it was to me. Come on, y'all. Some of y'all holding some of them family grudges y'all need to let go of today. And you know what? Family will make you mad quicker than anybody. And the church said, preach it, pastor. Preach it. Family sometimes. And I remember that day when God set a prisoner free in my heart. That was a freedom day. I don't know if you've ever served time. You ever been in a, matter of fact, some of you serve time in jobs. You get in there and you have to stay 10, 12 hours. And, and when you come out, you're, you're done. Boy, whew, a weight's lifted. Can I tell you something? God wants to lift a weight today off of your, off of your shoulders. He wants to lift a weight and set a captive free today. Some of us don't even realize we're captive. Amen? Don't even realize it. I mean, if a dog keeps biting you, why do you keep petting it? Amen? I don't know about you, but if a dog keeps biting me, he's got to go. God wants to get some dogs out of your life today. Amen? Amen? Somebody say, forgive, so that I might be forgiven. The forgiven forgives. I mean, what, 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 really, what are you going to do if you don't forgive them? You're just going to go around so you can tell somebody you told them off? Let's be real. I mean, let's be honest today. And I don't know about you, but... It, I think we're all probably guilty somewhere in our life of telling somebody off. And then when you left, you still didn't solve a problem. You still didn't have that release. All it did was stir up and kindle more anger and more fire. That's why Jesus said this, this uh, uh, unforgiveness will make you sick. It'll, it, it, will, it will hinder your health. Unforgiveness will cause you to make poor choices in life. Unforgiveness will cause you to share that same seed with your children, and then they'll grow up doing the same thing. Because 90% of what we do is taught behavior. Come on. 
That's the truth. I can tell you what's going on at your house. Give me your kids for 10 minutes. It's taught behavior. Y'all with me? Boy, it got quiet then. <laughs> oh. I, I believe God would have me to say today, either you're going to handle it or he's going to handle it, but you're not both going to handle it. Our job is to be willing to say, God, I forgive. I'm going to let go today. I'm going to give this to you. I'm, I'm going to ask you to come into my heart, and I want you to help me forgive. I, I forgave, Pastor, but I cannot forget. Can I tell you something? You'll never forget, and there's a reason why you'll never forget. See, we all like to, we like to have that excuse. I know, but I can't forget. I don't know why. It just won't go away. God gave us that. Listen, has anybody ever seen anybody get snake bit before? I haven't, but you know what I'm talking about? That's ugly, isn't it? We'll never forget it if you ever saw somebody get snake bit. Why? To keep you away from snakes. I was at somebody's house here a few days ago and lifted up something, and there was a mama copperhead and nine babies. I didn't cuss, but I went to murdering. <laughs> Name of one kind of snake. And that joker's got to be dead. But you're, God doesn't erase your memory so you won't go back to that same thing again. Don't let yourself get in that situation. Amen? I forgive, but... Don't, don't, don't forget so you don't get back in that same situation. I've recently learned a big valuable lesson in my own life. When you learn, learn. Don't, and that's why we don't forget. To forgive is say, you know, let me tell you what forgiveness is. True forgiveness True forgiveness. Y'all ready for this? You might want to write it down. I know it's not in your notes, but I'm going to give you Mark's definition of true forgiveness. True forgiveness means you give up your right to ever bring it up again. Oh, boy. So if you got somebody in your life and you, and, and you, and you say, I forgive you, now you just turned over the keys to never bring it up again. Come on. And sometimes that's hard, y'all. Right? That's hard right there. That, that's a hard one. But watch, through the power of God, nothing we can do on our own strength, because if we could, we've already done it. But God wants to fix some of those things in our life if we'll allow Him to be our helper and to help us when we, when we, when we fail Him. Amen? When we fail Him. I, now I'm going to ask again, how many in here has been hurt? How many in here is carrying hurt right now? Be honest with us. Okay, God wants to deal with some things today. I ask you to write it down on your, because we're going to, I'm going to ask you to all week long make a declaration with me that you're going to pray for that person all week. Pray for them, not, not that they die, not that they get some bad disease or something, but you're going to pray for them. God bless them. Hmm. God, help me forgive so that I may be forgiven. Help me, Lord. Help me release these to you. I don't know about you, but when that freedom comes, there's a change that takes place in your heart that I can't even explain to you. It's a change that, that'll change the way you think and the way you see things in life when you can release somebody out of your life. There may be some of you in here got several you need to let go of today. There may be several hurts in your life. Maybe there's one big, deep-seated root today that God wants to deal with. If you're willing to say, you know what, I will forgive today on purpose, even though I don't feel it right now, I'm going to forgive them.
Now, who today will say, I, I'm going to take that challenge for this week. I'm going to forgive, and I'm going to keep praying blessings over them. And watch, as you start praying for them, it'll get easier, it'll get easier, and it'll get easier. Then when you stop doing it, the next thing you know, you'll start going, wait a minute, I forgot to pray for them. And you'll find yourself in a different place, opened up for the Spirit of God to do a work in your life. Amen? If everyone would, would you stand to your feet, every head bowed, every eye closed, as we allow the Holy Spirit to do surgery in his house today. Whomever it may be, whatever hurt it is that you're carrying that's, that has kept you in bondage, whomever's name you wrote down, or maybe you didn't write their name down, but you got them down in your heart. And for each one that you're going to pray for this week, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord, today to be a better Christ follower than I was yesterday. Father, I ask for your freedom in your house today. That every heart be receptive to your word. Let your power and your presence be known. Father, as co-laborers with you, we come before you today with our hurts, our disappointments, our letdowns. And we say, God, we sh today we need your help to overcome so that we can make better decisions. Some here have greater trials in life than others. But their hurt is equal. Hurt is hurt. Disappointments are disappointments. Letdowns are letdowns. Now, Holy Spirit, speak into our hearts today. Speak into our lives. Father, I thank you. As Paul penned to the church of Ephesus, unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ever ask or think, according to the power that works in us, Right now, in the name of Jesus, I ask that that power be activated in each life. That power be turned up to overcome. And that in each one of our lives, as we forgive today, right where you're standing, I want you to on purpose forgive. Right now, right where you're standing, forgive. So I let this go today. I'm no longer am I going to be shackled to this. No longer am I going to let this dictate who I am. No longer am I going to let this keep me shackled to the prison floors of my life. But I want freedom today. If that's you, I want you to receive this. Father, in the name of Jesus, let your anointing flow through their lives. To remove every burden and to destroy every yoke. Father, I give you the praise and I give you honor that you are God of more than enough. A God of compassion, a God of love. Now help us be more like you. That we have more love, more compassion. And we're freely to forgive as you have forgiven. And we receive that today by faith. And all of God's children said, Amen. If you receive that, give the Lord a hand clap of praise today.